Okay, so you can't assign or display Y numbers. So let's have a look at the possible reasons as to why that's happening. I'm going to use F4 to zoom in on this particular page. On this first component, I can see that when I double click, nothing happens on the properties for that wire. This is because it's only got a single connection point that it's wired to. If I copy across to this component and try that same process again, double click, I can now put a wire number on there. So the first rule, we have to go between valid connection points on valid symbols. If I go up to the electrical ribbon and up to the connection command in the top right, I can display the connection points and verify that those are connection points and there's a wire between them. The next thing, when I click on this one, again, nothing happens. In the properties panel, I can see the object type is a line. On the first one, that's a wire. So it's important you draw this using not the graphical line command, but the draw wire command. So if I take this off, draw wire. This one is okay now. The next one, I can see now that I've displayed connection points, there aren't any at this point here. So this isn't a valid symbol. It's just a piece of text. So that's not going to get a Y number. Now on the next one, I can see the circles, but they're not yellow or magenta. This has not been blocked together as a symbol. So in this situation, they are connection points, but they need to be blocked. So I select everything, right click, block, as a component, click on OK, and assign an identification, click OK. And now this is a valid symbol. If I click on a double click on this, I can now assign a Y number. Now down at the bottom of the page, I seem to have valid information. This is a wire, these are symbols, and this is a symbol. The problem here is that I've got sub symbols. I've got symbols on the second level of a component. At the bottom, if I double click, I can see this is a PLC main symbol. And it has connection zero repeated several times. And that's for each new symbol. The first connection point on the symbol is yellow, so I can see that these are all separate symbols. I can use a command control D to bring up something called a page debugger. It shows me the structure of everything on the page. When I hover down at the bottom, I can see this is a valid connection point and using the arrows on the keyboard, I can go up to the top level and show that this is the PLC main symbol. Going back down again, I can see that's the first connection point. Then I have a sub symbol, a PLC signal. And as I go to the right on the arrows on the keyboard, I can see there is a connection symbol there. Now this is not valid. So these connection points within symbols cannot be used. The only way of working this is to right click and explode the symbol so that these are now separate PLC signal symbols. They don't have a component reference, a product, so they should really be corrected. But in this situation, I can now double click on this wire and assign a wire number. Before that, on any of these others, I can't assign wire numbers if it goes to a PLC signal within a PLC main symbol. Okay, so if you can assign a wire number but you can't see it, then let's have a look at what could be causing that. The first thing is fairly obvious if you double click, there is an option there on the number to turn off the display of that. When you double click, you can turn that back on. Uh, most probably though, we've got a situation where under electrical, if you go down to the bottom right on the settings, You'll see you can open up the settings. Now for the IEC version, we can have either potential or signal numbering. If we switch to signal, which is the default for the IEEE in America, then we'll see we have a signal type setup dialog. And that allows us to see a variety of different signals that can be set up. A maximum of five for the standard level and unlimited for the advanced level. Now for each one of these, we have two sections for the format of the net numbering for the whole potential and whether we show that net name and a section here for show wire number, which is the individual segments of wire. So if I switch on signal numbering and don't show anything, when I click on OK, click on OK, all of the wire numbers disappear. If I double click on this wire here, there is a wire number here, but now we're really concerned with the net name, not the wire number. So I would assume putting a wire number one in there and again, I still can't see it. So back into the wire settings, signal type settings, signal type setup, 
and then I click on show the net name. Click on OK. And I can now see those net names on there. And remember, it's this field here that we're working with. Now, if we were to switch, instead of using signal type setup and using net names, if I turn this off and use wire numbers, be aware that we're working on individual segments now. So if I go into draw on a wire and put a wire across from here to here, I delete that and put a section to there. And I go back into the wire numbering, generate, and I'm going to overwrite all of the wires that aren't locked. So I'm going to say, OK. And now you can see what we've got here using wire numbering with signal types. And you can see that to this point here, I've got wire number three coming down from the top and wire number four going to the next component. So this is the main difference between net numbering and signal numbering or wire numbering. So in signal type setup, it's not the wire number really that we're generally using. It's going to be the net name. And when you click on OK, you'll see that that's then numbered by potential throughout the project.